All right, here we go. This episode is sponsored by Hired.com. Are you searching for a new job? That can be stressful, scary, and time-consuming. Pushy recruiters try to sell you on roles you don't actually want, and the job boards make you feel like you're throwing your resume into a black hole, never to be seen again. And sometimes you go all the way through the interview process just to find out at the very end that the salary, offer, or company culture doesn't match what you're looking for. Hired is the world's most intelligent talent matching platform for full-time and contract opportunities in engineering development, design, product management, data science, sales, and marketing. We make your job search faster, focused, and stress-free. Instead of endlessly applying to companies and hoping for the best, Hired puts you in control of when and how you connect with compelling new opportunities. After completing one simple application, top employers apply to hire you. And on Hired, you receive personal interview requests and upfront salary information so you can make informed decisions about what opportunities to pursue over a condensed timeline. Hired offers access to more than 4,000 innovative employers, including big brand names like Facebook and smaller emerging startups. The size and type of company you want, to connect with is totally up to you. And we help you find new opportunities in 17 major cities in North America, Europe, Asia, and Australia. Open to relocation? Let them know. Your privacy and autonomy in your job search is of utmost importance. And if you go check them out at the show's link, that's hired.com slash adventures in Angular, you can get double their normal hiring bonus. So instead of $300, you get $600 for signing up at our link. That's hired.com slash adventures in Angular. Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Adventures in Angular show. This week on our panel, we have Alyssa Nichol. Hello. Shai Resnick. Yo, yo, yo. Lucas Rubelke is trying to join us. He's having some technical difficulties. I'm trying. La, 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 la. Yay. Yay. <laughs> yeah. And I have my third microphone. So just in time to save the day. Sweet. Nice. I'm Charles Maxwood from devchat.tv. Quick shout out about Angular Dev Summit. Uh, it's going to be in September. It's going to be free. So come come uh, join us. Great talks. We have a special guest this week, and that's Minko Getchev. Minko, do you want to say hi? Hey, hello, Ron. Now, you've been on, but not for a while. Do you want to just give everybody a quick overview of who you are and what you've been working on lately? Okay, sure. Uh, so in my... Currently, I'm working on a startup, and in my spare time, I'm doing open source, mostly related to Angular, JavaScript, uh, programming languages. That's what excites me most. Now, how do you work in a startup and have free time? Yeah, that's, I'm usually trying to find some overlap between the, do, between the work that I do in the startup and the work that I do in my, that is supposed to be my spare time work. So that's why the previous project I've been working on, it was completely Angular, and the CLI was still not out, so I developed a seed, uh, Angular seed, which we were like I was maintaining, and that was kind of part of my job. Now it's kind of more complicated because I'm working a lot on the back end, and uh, the overlap is not that big with my open source activity. Gotcha. We brought you in to talk today about Codalizer. Do you want to just give us a brief introduction to what that is and what it does? All right, sure. So uh, last year, Angular, together with John Papa and Horbel and Igor Minar and a few other folks, we worked on the Angular style guide. And I thought that it might be a good idea if we have some automated way of verification whether a given project follows the style guide, to some extent at least. So I started prototyping a few rules on top of TSLint, which were mostly checking some things, whether they're valid or not, so, um, instead of the TypeScript code of the application. Right after that, I built on top of this and I included the Angular's template parser and uh, I started providing similar style checks on top of the templates as well. I did the same for the Angular's CSS styles instead of the, instead of the components and for the Angular expressions instead of the templates. So basically, Colizer is a tool for static code analysis for Angular applications. Nice. So I, I kind of want to get into the implementation, but I also want to, I, I think it'll be more useful for people if we start out with how it's used. Yes, of course. So uh, basically it, it allows, uh, you can use it as um, just a set of rules on top of TSLint. So when you include, you need to install it with NPM, NPM I Colizer. And right after that, when it is in, in the node modules directory, it can, it can be included into the TSLint config of the project. And TSLint, it's quite popular tool right now, which is uh, some kind of an alternative of uh, ESLint for TypeScript, for a TypeScript world, which 
provide similar set of rules, which uh, allows us to just perform static analysis on top of the code and verify whether the source code follows some style guidelines that our team have agreed upon. So that's just lint. And when we include Colliler inside of this, we can not only analyze the TypeScript code, but also the template of, the, of our Angular applications. So uh, what we need to do is just to add the rules directory with Colliser rules and introduce a couple of rules and uh, configure them according to um, the style guidelines that our team have discussed and agreed upon to be followed. And right after that, we can make sure that our project follows these rules just by running TSLint on top of the entire project. So I have a question, and this is, I think it's time for some real talk, Minko. Sure. Is how many of the default TSLint rules do you agree with? Out of the box, how many of them are you like, I'm so glad this is here because I would have <laughs> messed up. The reason why I bring that up, because like I die a little bit, like I'm just like moral quandary on the trailing white space thing that I get dinged on all the time. And it's like, if anybody's going to see this, I'm just going to leave it here. But if no one is, I turn that off in a hypersecond. So just tell me for the audience, how many of them do you agree with right out of the box? <laughs> okay. I don't know exactly how many in count. There, are, there is a good set of TSLint rules, which uh, we've discussed and added in the Angular CLI. So I agree with pretty much most of them, I guess. There are some uh, related, for instance, for the max line of the max length of the line, which is 140 characters, which I think again makes sense. I agree, yeah, I agree with most of them. There are some annoying for sure. For instance, in some cases, you get some crazy wordings for uh, semicolons, which are kind of optional in JavaScript anyway. But uh, well, the TSL intro came up with some specific guidelines for that and some specific rules for that. So you should uh, provide a, add a semicolon in, for instance, function expression, but you should not add it in function, but you, you should not place it after function uh, declaration and things like that. There are definitely some some weird rules out there, but uh, well, if the team have already agreed, agreed on some set of subset of them, then uh, it's worth following them in order to like keep away from arguing what is right and what is not. That was a very polite answer. <laughs> I vote I we go drink <laughs> some beers and then you tell me what you really think. <laughs> sure. Do it. Um, so I have a I have a question. What do you recommend as the best way to to add a codalizer or even a linting to an ongoing like a big project to start it without one? Yeah, I guess I'll try to add this incrementally one rule by rule. Otherwise, it's going to become a mess. And probably if, at first, the build I will not uh, fail the build after if uh, linting haven't passed successfully, but all the warnings are going to be explicitly reported so that the team will be able to fix the warnings one by one and eventually at some point clean the entire projects. Okay. There are some pretty interesting rules there. For instance, uh, from what I heard, in some big companies, uh, they have enabled no any rule in TSLint, which is pretty cool. So they completely forbid the usage of any. Which no very, yeah. Uh, not, not 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 only non implicit any. This is a uh, part of uh, TypeScript itself of the compiler, but also for mm -hmm. they're forbidding the any type. Mm -hmm. So that's super strict, but quite often makes sense. Otherwise, we're turning we're just giving up static typing and turning TypeScript into some version of JavaScript. But uh, some will say that you're this way you're turning JavaScript into Java. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's possible. I don't know if that's an extremely bad thing. If we keep Ooh, away from it. <laughs> burn. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we keep away from the super uh, big verbosity there, I guess it's not extremely bad language. But yeah, yeah that's I, I was trying to keep my polite my polite <laughs> <laughs> Drink a, a couple of beers, Minko, and then uh, answer the the question. <laughs> Right. And with Colizer, exactly what we have in TSLint, exactly the same rules that uh, we can apply there. For instance, uh, if we want to have space within a uh, surrounding 
inside of the structure, uh, the structuring, for instance. The same thing we can have uh, with Colliser inside of our template. So we can specify that we want to have white space uh, surrounding the expression within an interpolation. So this is one of the rules. We should also we can also specify that we want to have space surrounding the pipe operator and so on and so forth. Previously, I also started working on not only styling uh, style checking, but also analysis, like more uh, interesting analysis on top of the application, for instance, uh, performance analysis, which is kind of hard to be implemented to be performed build time because we don't know the what data the application is going to process. But still, there are some heuristics. For instance, we can we can consider that a given component is going to have poor performance if, if it has some huge amount of bindings inside of the template. So with static analysis, we can find such templates and eventually warn the users about eventual performance issues that are possible. Nice. I have another question. How hard is it to add or change a rule in, Cod in CodeLarger? It's it might be slightly it might be slightly harder compared to TSLint because there are more things which can be statically verified. In TSLint, there is usually there is the visitor pattern, which is like classical design pattern from the, the book of uh, the Gang of Four, which is used for traversal of the abstract syntax tree of the TypeScript code. So basically, you need to implement the visitor pattern, and when you visit a specific construct, for instance, uh, when you visit the class declaration, you can just uh, verify whether the name of the class, for instance, follows some guidelines. And that's pretty much the same thing in Colliser. However, uh, you can also implement the same visitor pattern for visiting the template of the, of the component. So the class declaration for, the, for this visitor is going to look slightly differently, but it is conceptually the same. And currently the project has uh, more than 20 contributors. So I guess it's, it's not extremely complicated, but, uh, and it's definitely not complicated if you spend uh, like 30, 40 minutes just looking into the code and open an issue, ask for further guidelines, I'll be happy to help with that. If if you had to make a jingle for Codalyzer, what would it be? A jingle? Oh my goodness, Shy, you're freaking amazing! <laughs> 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 I'm <so> it. <laughs> Lucas, Lucas, uh, <laughs> Lucas can help you out. He's a musical genius. Yeah, <laughs> you're a rap genius. So if you were going to make a rap about Minko making a jingle about me. <laughs> <laughs> What would it be, bro? <laughs> I don't understand. Minko, are you saying you seriously haven't sang about Codalizer yet? Like, at all? <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah. When I'm alone in the room with nobody else around. Uh, I'm singing uh, about Codalizer secretly. And about Haskell. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you, if you were a bird, what bird would Codalizer be? No, of course, course. Yeah, it should be a penguin. A, pe a penguin? <laughs> Whoa, that came out of open the source. Field. I was not yeah. expecting penguin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, what words did you imagine that collider is before I told you that it's a penguin? What, what I was, was thinking your... like, you know, like a cardinal or something? No, no, no. It's the bird that sits in the alligator's mouth and like picks the stuff out of the teeth. Like, I mean, that is the relationship. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. like uh, I, I'm going to swerve us back onto the road. Whoa. Oh, this is... <laughs> okay. I have, I have a serious question. Okay. All right. <laughs> no, no, really, seriously. What made you write this tool? Like, what was the motivation behind, like, like learning and the visitor pattern or, like, or implementing it, like, I think the compiler, the Angular compiler using uh, yeah. this pattern also, and like made you go deep, deep down into the core of Angular. And I remember you talked about it before Angular 2 was even released in like, like last year's NGCon, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, what, uh, there what? are a couple of motivations that I had. The first one is that so we had the style guide and some of the styles there they were kind of 
easy for static for static verification for automated verification so th this way we save a lot of time from code reviews so we still need to perform code reviews in order to find logical errors into the codes and a few other things but we at least can skip the verification of some of the practices from the style guide because they can be automatically added as part of the build process and respectively the, the build can fail if the project is not following them so that was one of the motivations the second one was i uh, as i mentioned i like compilers so it that's kind of the front end of a compiler uh, just going through the phases of lexical analysis and after that syntax analysis and, and analyzing the abstract, abstract syntax tree that's part of a compiler itself and there are some interesting algorithms going on there for instance uh, a few one another rule from collider that i was working on it's not it's not completely stable yet but uh, it works uh, in some cases I, I still would not recommend people to use it I, I need a few more iterations on top of it but uh, one of these rules is uh, to find out which styles out of a component are actually used inside of the template so if we just if we add styles inside of the template and at some point we remove the elements uh, styles inside of the, the components excuse me and at some point we remove the, the elements out of the template which uh, so this this way collider can find out that some of the styles eventually are no longer applied to any of the elements inside of the template so this I've is i've actually heard about this so you're saying it's not ready yet though well, it's uh, it doesn't it performs some basic analysis. For instance, one um, for instance for external external styles, one um, CSS file it can be included into several components. And currently, uh, Coalizer is not going to consider all the different components which are using the style. It is going to consider only the current file that uh, is being cleaned. So uh, some of the styles which are used in other components, they're going to be considered as dead styles, which is not true. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, uh, it's it's cool for demos still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, but probably in a couple of iterations, this is going to be already pretty much completed. And of course, there are some things which are not possible to be verified statically. For instance, even the styles, because some, some of the styles which we we can add them dynamically by using JavaScript, by using the renderer, for instance. And if we add a style dynamically with the renderer, Coalizer cannot find this out because this is something which happens at runtime and Coalizer performs its, its uh, analysis as part of the build process. Mm, that makes sense. Well, is this, so like, is this idea of searching through and finding um, either redundant or non-use styles, is this something that like Codalizer is like doing for the very first time and nobody's ever done it? Or are there other tools that this would just kind of replace because it does so many other things? Well, maybe there are, for, for Angular, there are there is no other tool like that, I think. Uh, okay. For JavaScript, maybe, maybe for, probably for JavaScript and for, like for regular HTML and CSS, there is, there is something like that. For sure, the browser can do that because the browser is the one who is applying the styles to the HTML. So the browser can very can easily find which styles are not being applied in the end. Yeah, I heard that uh, in the in the last uh, lecture of um, Paul Irish in uh, Google I/O, they mentioned that now the browser can show you like unused code in JavaScript and in your CSS, like what's not used at all. Yeah, so, that's pretty uh, cool. I think yeah. it analyzes which part of uh, which part, what part of your JavaScript is actually being executed. Yeah, yeah. It's, and also uh, CSS. Yeah. So yeah, so this this still involves execution of the entire web app, uh, which is unfortunate, but there is no other way to do that. Are you ready to master Angular? Oasis Digital offers Angular Bootcamp, a three-day intense workshop class for individuals or teams. They cover Angular 4 and 2 and focus on the skills and knowledge you need for complex, data-rich applications. They also still offer AngularJS for teams supporting older projects. Bring them to your site or send developers to them in St. Louis, San Francisco, New York, D.C., and other cities, and online at angularbootcamp.com. So if I want to write a rule do I simply take 
the uh, abstract syntax tree and just uh, tell it what to look for? Or how exactly does that work? Yeah. Um, what what I usually do when I want to write a rule, because Colliser right now has not a big API, but still something that you cannot learn by heart like that, and it's not necessary. So what I usually do is just copying and pasting existing crew and modifying it. Um, what you do is uh, to provide a it's, a, it's basically a standard TypeScript rule, so TSLint rule. So what you need to do is just to provide a rule, uh, abstract rule walker, I think. That was the name of the class. So implementation of this abstract rule walker. Right after that, to this abstract rule, uh, you will need to provide the visitor. And the rule is just going to visit each individual node of the abstract syntax tree with the visitor that have been implemented. And uh, that's it. At some point, if the rule needs to perform some more analysis on top of the template, uh, in this case, developer needs to provide one more visitor, which is on charge of linting the template itself. So in the worst case, if the rule is completely, is, is super complicated and it analyzes the TypeScript code, the template, the, the styles, and also the Angular expressions, you need four visitors. That's because of the extra syntax which uh, we have in, Ang in Angular's templates and styles and also uh, the Angular's expressions themselves. The cool thing about Collider right now is that uh, by building this, you know, this out-of-the-box supports SAS and uh, Puck templates and whatever because it supports source maps internally. So one other thing that I'm curious about, you said that uh, you can analyze the, the code and you can actually pick out... Um, you can pick out areas where it's not going to perform as well. Are you still looking like statically um, analyzing the code and picking out the problem areas or the likely problem areas? Yeah. Uh, currently, yeah, that's a, that's a possible. I haven't found use that's very, very uh, useful use case for this so far. But it's possible to, it's, it's going to be a very simple rule just to analyze the template of a component, count the number of, bi the number of bindings, and if they are above given number, just reports to the user that eventually this component is getting far too complicated and needs to be divided uh, into a separate component, for instance, or whatever suggestion makes sense. So it's uh, with Angular, so for this purpose, I'm using some of the internal APIs of Angular, which are public, but they are not stable yet. Mm -hmm. That's uh, another issue that's... Uh, I have in Colalizer sometimes. So sometimes between minor versions, Colalizer's template-related rules, they just stop working. What I did was uh, to at least to not fail the build, but uh, instead just to fail silently. And, well, I'm following the template compiler API very closely, so I can see when there are breaking changes and release new version of Colalizer regarding the changes. So for this purpose, I built a very small um, library called uh, same word DSL, which where I can just verify whether, for instance, if Angular is between versions 2.5 and, and 4, then I want to invoke the Angular's template parser in one way. Otherwise, if I have newer version of Angular, I want to invoke the template parser in another way. And this version, this uh, library seems quite, pop quite uh, useful for now. I have three, four branches for now in order to support different versions of Angular. That's crazy. <laughs> that uh, that uh, it seems like a, a lot of work. In, in terms of adoption of, of Codalyzer, do you know like the numbers or like, is it like popular? Yeah, yeah so uh, when I initially introduced the two, so so the initial, initially I, I started working on this tool before the Angular compiler, ahead of time compiler existed. And uh, what I noticed was that I was implementing, implementing a metadata collector, which is one of the modules in the current compiler. Luckily, without losing much more time. So uh, at this time, Igor Minar from the Angular team, he proposed that we may want to, that uh, Angular CLI might want to adopt Coalizer, adopt Coalizer instead of, and as part of its core. And uh, I also had chat with the Angular team and specifically with Chuck and Tobias. 
regarding the, their future plans for the compiler. And it turns out that there is huge intersection between both tools. And this time, at this time, I had some somehow working data collector, but uh, well, check builds something amazing that I'm currently using in Coalizer and a few other tools. So uh, about the, your question about the adoption, it has Coalizer currently has almost 700,000 downloads per month. Ooh, because yeah. of the CLI? Because uh, I don't know how many downloads the CLI has right now. Probably a huge percentage of these downloads are because of the CLA. Mm, it was also adopted by different Angular starters. And it is it, uh, like about 50 packages depend on Coalizer already. So there's a word that they actually call um, what you did, Minko, with getting it bundled with the CLI. And um, it's, it's two words, baller move. <laughs> and you're famous now. Like you... Like your legacy is cemented in the history of front end web <laughs> development. I mean, granted, Internet Explorer did the same thing with Windows, but I've got a, I've hey, got a hey. real good feeling about this one. Hey, don't, I wouldn't compare Minko and no, like, I mean, Codilizer with the CLI to IE and Windows. You, but um, With Edge is fine. I like Edge. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> with that, you're the Edge. Of the, of the Microsoft <laughs> browser. Okay, sounds good. They recently, uh, they have ORTC right now. They, they have some pretty modern APIs. I like them. Yeah. And Safari is moving forward also. So as, as far as how this works, you're just relying on TSLint then to break things down into, you know, tokens and the syntax, abstract syntax yeah. tree. And then yeah. doing the work from there. Yeah. Initially, I, pl I was planning to build something from scratch. That that was for like I considered that for maybe a couple of hours, but right after that I saw what the adoption of TSLint was, and also there are so many extensions for TSLint for all the popular browsers, for all the popular IDs and text editors. So for me to maintain a tool which performs some linting on top of Angular and maintain all the different plugins for the different text editors and IDs, it was going to be too much overhead. So I just did some extended TSLint somehow, and currently I'm reporting it's... Uh, I'm also contributing to TSLint when there are some issues which are directly impacting Coalizer or when there is something in Angular which can be verified statically. I'm also contributing to TSLint in order to move both projects forward. But yeah, I'm relying on TSLint's error reporting. And internally, TSLint uses the TypeScript compiler for getting the AST. And so you're already riding on top of uh, of TypeScript together. Uh, yeah, it's, it's on. So basically, it's TypeScript is the base for that. Right after that is TSLint. On top of TSLint, well, actually, it's not very well structured layer diagram because also the Angular compiler is used. The Angular template parser is used, which is on very low level as well, since it produces an AST. But there are there are some moving parts in Colliser right now. I'm trying to keep it with as less dependencies as possible. So currently it has six dependencies. Uh, I think it's uh, it's getting good so far. Maybe I can drop a few of them as well. Regarding documentation for adding a rule, you said that there isn't any currently, right? For for like how to add the rule. Yeah, for Coalizer there isn't uh, there there isn't one. There is for TSLint. I think maybe I'm uh, somewhere linking to it. Probably. But, I'm asking a leading question because I think you have like you have an opportunity or we have the opportunity to maybe ask for help from the community uh, if someone wants to help and write the documentation maybe could yeah that's going that. to be great currently yeah that's going to be great currently I'm generating documentation out of the rules uh, but I took this idea from TSLint but it's going to be great if there is more documentation for getting started building new rules because there is place for a, ro a lot of rules, especially for the Angular's templates. Nice. So if anyone hears that and uh, want to contribute, like open up an issue. <laughs> or... Yeah. Yeah. That's the best step to go with. Awesome. And uh, for instance, today, I think I'm going to release, release version 3.1. Which has four new rules. Two of them were added by the community. It's just uh, 
Amazing, yeah. They were they are very high quality rules uh, with the pull request I saw tests and the rule implementation and reasoning behind the rule, which is really cool. Does this work with Angular JS? Uh, it's yeah. There was a, yeah. That, that's a great question. There was there is ng metadata. I don't know if you've seen this project. It's uh, ng metadata, which is just Angular syntax on top of Angular JS. Right. And since uh, Colalizer doesn't perform type checking right now, it performs only analysis on top of a single file. This allows Colalizer to perform the same style checks that it is able to perform in Angular in Angular JS. So it can perform the same checks in Angular JS as in Angular. So it it basically works. Uh, even some pretty interesting style checks work there. For instance, if in an Angular JS template there is a binding with the interpolation directive, Colalizer can parse the template and right after that find if the property that you have actually bound to exists inside of the components declaration so if uh, for instance the property have been misspelled because that's very common mistake for especially for bindings inside of the te- inside of templates colalizer is going to tell you well uh, this is the name of the property that you have bound to and it doesn't exist inside of the component declaration maybe you mean something else Colalizer is going to find out all the different declarations inside of the component. It is going to find the string distance between them, and it is going to pick the one which has closest string distance to what you currently have in the, inside of the template. Nice. So it, it becomes the TypeScript of your Angular JS app. It can do that. It becomes the Angular compiler, <laughs> yeah. NGC of your <laughs> Angular JS app. Nice. You can try this on uh, colalizer.com. There is a playground which illustrates a couple of the rules. Wow, I can try this at home. Nice. So in order to set this up on like a CI machine or something, it just needs to be able to, what, run Node yeah. and install some NPM packages? Yeah, run Node, install TSLint, install Colalizer and uh, add this rule directory with the Colalizer rules inside the TS- TSLint config. Mm, I have added this into the README for integration with both custom project and your CLI where it works out of the box and your seat. So, yeah, it should be pretty much up to date, I guess. But, uh, yeah, if there is something wrong, uh, I can just uh, open an issue and I'm going to fix that, fix the documentation or just open a PR, which is going to be on better case. Is there a visual tool for like knowing what the rule does uh, do? Uh, there is documentation on colalizer.com slash rules where the different rules are explained. But there isn't any visual tool like when you see like on code, like a sample code, if you turn off a rule or turn oh, on yeah. or something like that. Yeah, there is uh, colalizer.com. It's it's like uh, it's like JS, JS, Bido, uh, JS Fido or JS Bin. Yeah, okay. So, uh, yeah, you can try the rule there. It performs linting in a web worker, and right after that, it returns the warnings to the main UI thread, so you can visualize them. Oh, nice. Well, anything else that we should know about Codalizer before we go to picks? I think, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, I'd love if I can get some feedback or rule implementations or suggestions or ideas. So, uh, yeah, feel free to reach me out or open an issue in Colalizer on github.com slash mgetcha slash Colalizer. Awesome. Sounds good. And yeah, it looks like there is uh, some documentation in the readme and things, so if you want to jump in and get started, it looks like that's the right place to go for more information too. Yep, that's correct. All right. Well, let's go ahead and do some picks. This episode is sponsored by Newbie Remote Comp. Newbie Remote Conf is a two-day completely virtual conference hosted by none other than Charles Max Wood. If travel expenses are an issue or you just can't afford to be away from home for two days, then join us. It's virtual. This conference is focused on people who are new to programming who want to learn what the pros know or just get a leg up in getting a job and getting into the programming community. We'll have speakers from all over the programming community to help you stay current in a Slack room where you can connect with speakers and other attendees in real time. We'll also have a live roundtable video chat for attendees and speakers, plus we'll provide the talk recordings to you within days of the conference. Early bird tickets are available for $150 until May 12th, and the call for proposals is open until April 28th. So come join us at newbieremoteconf.com. 
Shai, do you want to start us off with picks? You put me on the spot. Yeah. I've been digging into the Angular source code lately, and I I I want to give a shout out <laughs> for the Reflect API, which Angular uses to to do the magical dependency injection. So and the flag for emit decorator metadata, which is the TS config uh, flag, which lets you basically know everything about a decorator function class or variable at runtime. So it's pretty crazy and insane and it's pretty damn cool because I'm I'm gonna use it to write a spy, a new spy library for for Angular tests, which I will uh, when you get will be released. I will uh, I will pick that one also. It's gonna be open source and cool. So the Reflect API, which comes from Core JS, this is the first pick, and the second pick is driving on the right side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> so Overrated. Let me, let, let, let me give a context. So I'm on, on in Cyprus now on a family vacation, and they drive on the left side of the road, <laughs> like they drive the opposite side, and I almost got killed three times on <laughs> on my way. So yeah. Um, oh, on top so, of didn't you say it's a manual, like a stick shift that you're driving, and so yeah. with your left hand, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I drove in a manual uh, gear. So, yeah. Oh, goodness. Be me. safe, Shy. That sounds terrifying. Yeah, I hope I will make it to next week's episode. So uh, we'll see about that. <laughs> All right. Alyssa, what are your picks? Um, I have two picks. My first one are the Apple AirPods. I finally got mine that I'd ordered like forever ago uh, this week. And so I've been trying them out. And it's pretty awesome not having to have a cord and being able to switch between all of my different products. So yes, I'm loving them. And my second pick is crutches because I broke my leg last or my foot, not my leg last week. And I have not been able to get around without them. So thank God for crutches because they are my mobility right now. So yes. Awesome. Lucas, what are your picks? Well, I was going to go with AirPods, but um, I'm not going to do <laughs> that now. Really? I just got them this morning. Uh, oh. <laughs> we're in the club. Uh, yeah. So two two picks. I'm going to switch up real quick. I just got back from a trip that is involved heavily with like pictures and media. So I went and got the new, or not the new, the iPhone uh, 7 Plus. And the portrait mode on that device is over the top. It's like worth the 800 bucks for the phone just for that camera mode. Um, so I'm actually preferential towards Android. I think it's a better operating system, but the hardware on uh, the iPhones are unparalleled. The portrait mode is ridiculous. Uh, and my second pick is this band I found, I was walking around and I heard it and I shazammed it and it's Wolf Peck. So V-U-L-F-P-E-C-K. And the song that I'm picking is 1612. It is one funky jam, and uh, I love it to pieces. And so uh, go check it out. I think it's on Spotify, YouTube, uh, whatever. But it's uh, it's pretty sweet. So I've had my 7 Plus for like forever now, and I love it. So I feel like since we have so many things in common, I'm going to love this band too. <laughs> well, if you like if you like funky, soulful music, then, uh, you know, basically, you know, all about that angular, but just like not about angular, but everything else. <laughs> like, you're gonna love this band. <laughs> okay, wolf, wolf pack or wolf peck? Peck. So B U L F P E C K. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm gonna jump in here with just one pick, and I mentioned it at the beginning of the show. I'm pulling together an Angular Dev Summit, and if you've come to Angular Remote Conf in the last two years. Kind of the same idea, except I'm spreading it out over a longer period of time. It's going to be about a week long. I'm still inviting speakers, so all of you who are on this call don't feel bad. I haven't sent them yet. Yeah, it's free to attend, and then if you want the all-access pass, you can pay for that, which you know just helps me cover my cost to put it on. It's going to be awesome. Uh, we're, we're going to have some excellent talks about how to do awesome stuff in Angular. So go to angulardevsummit.com. And you can see who we've got speaking and all of that awesome stuff. 
Uh, Minko, what are your picks? So I have three picks, I guess. One, there were two, but since Lucas, one of the one of the picks for of Lucas was iPhone Seven. I just got Pixel the other day, and it works really great with Project Pi. I have internet like in the entire world, so it's uh, really cool. My other pick is Angular I/O, since it is uh, there is new Angular I/O, which is progressive web app right now. It's great, so go and check it out. And my last pick is a paper by uh, Philip Wadler called Monads for Functional Programming. Monads look very scary, and in this paper, he's making them very accessible. Can I butt in and, and have another pick? Sure. <laughs> I, I want to pick Minko. <laughs> <laughs> That's my pick, my last I, pick. Someday, I hope to be smart enough to even read Monads. For yeah. functional programming. You should like, take a look at the paper and you will be able to do that today. Wow. Like, I'm practically going to become you. <laughs> Although I think you did call me out for a phone dance off. Like, you know, <laughs> you got an iPhone, well, I got a Pixel. Let's fight. Like, I figured we're going to have a real Sharks and, and Jets moment here, you know, dancing in the street. Yeah. Actually, I, I prefer Pixels too. I, I prefer iPhones too. They feel more, like, more real. <laughs> This one feels more like a toy, but Project Five works great. I love Android uh, software. I love iPhone hardware. If we could just make a love child, it would yeah. be the best. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I think it's time to wrap up the show. But thanks for coming, Minko. And Thank we, you very much for having me. We will catch everyone next week. Bye, players. <laughs> Bandwidth for this segment is provided by Cashfly, the world's fastest CDN. Deliver your content fast with Cashfly. Visit C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com to learn more. <laughs>